What's up guys, this is Matt Jansen. I'm one of the owners of Raw Nutrition. This is gonna be a new series. I just felt called and I wanted to give back to you guys. Just basically create more brand content for the brand in, in the area that I feel most comfortable in and that is bodybuilding. Just sharing my experiences with you guys, uh, my expertise. I've been coaching full time since 2013. You know, this is a tremendous passion of mine. I've been able to have a lot of success, thankfully, you know, to the guys that trust me to work with them. So anyway, with that being said, this is going to be a new series. We want to make sure that we're addressing your questions, giving you guys the type of content that you need to better your bodybuilding journey. And again, this is where I feel like I can be most be used within the brand right now. And I just want to give back to you guys in this way. So if you guys have questions, please make sure that you ask them, whether it's on YouTube, on Instagram, and we will formulate a way through different categories of these little subtopics that we're going to do answering questions. And I'll make sure that I get your question answered. So let's jump into it. This first episode today, whatever you want to call it, roundtable discussion episode is going to be about fat loss phases, whether that's in a pre-contest phase or in a cleanup phase. I just wanted to address all questions related to building a diet, how long a fat loss phase should be, anything that you guys had in that realm. That's what we're talking about today. So we're going to jump into them now. Okay, so the question is, what variables do I consider the most when structuring a meal plan? And really, what I like to kind of correlate this to is if I were to drive from here to California, and I were to do that without a cell phone, without a GPS, without a map, I probably eventually could get there just for, through my awareness of geography, but it would probably take me a lot longer than if I had some type of organized system, organized method in order to get there and one of the th three things that I mentioned earlier. So the same thing applies for nutrition or training or anything that you need to make a conscious effort in terms of here's your starting point, here's the goal, here's the objective, how do I get there, how do I streamline A to B? So really when it comes to any diet, and this is where I think a lot of uh, beginners get frustrated, especially when I'm having correspondence with them over email or over uh, messages. But in order to know where you're going to go, you need to know where you're at. Okay. So any type of meal plan, any type of diet, any type of essentially baseline calories that I were to put somebody on, it's all going to be based off of where they're at right now, whether they're over consuming calories, whether they're under consuming calories, anywhere in between that is the essential, the starting point, that's the baseline. So if you're eating, let's say two healthy meals a day, you're having uh, a Starbucks coffee and like a Starbucks sandwich once a day, and then you're kind of having a free for all dinner, whatever that looks like, um, that would be your baseline. You know, that's your, essentially your base, basic caloric needs, whether you're gaining, maintaining, losing on that rate. And then from there is how I would build your specific diet. So obviously I would clean up the variables that don't need to be there in terms of, you know, these meals out or these untracked meals, but I would still use a, a generic estimate of these meals out and these untracked meals to then build your base to then know where do we need to head from here. Do you like to count calories or macros in the fat loss phase? So that's a good question. Um, macros equal and make up calories. So they're, they're all in one the same, you know? So basically you have nine calories for every gram of, a gram of fat that you consume. You have four calories for every gram of carb you consume. You have four calories for every gram of protein that you consume. So these things, what I like to think, and, and maybe a better way to ask this question or, or how it comes into my brain is when I build a diet, I don't build calories for the day. I build them on a meal by meal basis. And then that equals the total for the day. That's just like how I like to think. Um, and then the same thing again, you know, we're, we're going to into a fat loss phase here. That might be the general direction. I also pull calories. I don't calculate in terms of, okay, this person's taking in 2,700. I'm going to pull them down to 2,350. I pull it on a meal by meal basis, you know, so it's, it's dealing for me, it's dealing with smaller numbers, simpler math. And then that then correlates to the bigger overall bottom, you know, baseline caloric pull or increase that somebody might need at that time. Can someone just eat in a deficit and not worry about what it is that they're eating in a fat loss phase? Ultimately, I think we need to think about this in the hierarchy of performance and maintaining muscle. And especially through a diet, the goal within a cosmetic look of bodybuilding or performance enhancement is to maintain tissue and to lose fat. So that's where I think that macronutrients play such a big role in the sense that you want to be consuming a, a certain amount of protein. I would say at minimum one gram of protein per pound of lean body tissue, not just overall mass. 
and then from there you make up the best the, the, the so basically during a during a for simplicity protein should be a fixed number okay um, I could argue that the leaner you get the the more necessity you have for that number to actually increase a little bit and then once protein is fixed then you make up the remaining amount of your calories from fats and carbohydrates you want to make those calories up from a performance standpoint. So carbohydrates around the workout are super important. I also think carbohydrates for from a satiety standpoint are also important throughout the day, as well as to help you sleep in the evening. So again, guys, I'm super simple with my approach. I try to keep all macronutrients in in each meal as long as possible. Once that stops working, that's when I start to plug and play always keeping protein in with each meal. And then some meals might be fat and protein only. Some meals might be fat and carbohydrate only. Again, around training, I'm trying to keep harmony and enjoyment and a stable body as much and as long as possible around training. So going into a workout for as long as I can, I will keep fats and carbohydrates in play. And then on the back end of that workout, that's when your recovery starts. I'll try to do that as well. So that way that person isn't ravenous coming out of their session. And then it's hard to just like exist outside of the bodybuilding world, outside of, you know, what you have to do the rest of the day. If that's the environment that you're in coming out of training. When do you start someone on a fat loss plan? Well, obviously this is based off of the goal. Um, but if, if, if in this instance, we're talking about specifically a contest prep, I prefer nine and a half times out of 10 on very rare cases, I always prefer more time than less time, especially for those of you guys listening. If this is your, you know, if you're going into your first prep or even your second prep, or honestly, even your third prep, I would give yourself more time than what you think you need. Um, because what, you know, one way I like to say it is if you've never been in true contest condition, you probably have baby fat that you've never ever lost, nor did you ever need to lose. Or even if you were an elite, you know, high school collegiate athlete, but your sport didn't require you to be super lean, then you've also had fat that you've never needed to lose, or you actually did need from a performance standpoint, which isn't bad. Um, so I would always give yourself more time. Um, I personally, even with my top athletes, with my Olympians, you know, guys of that caliber, I still prefer a 20 week prep. Um, if somebody is holding more body fat than what I feel comfortable with, then like 20 weeks is is where that prep will start for me. And then I'll back it off from there based off of where their body composition's at. So it might be 24 to 26 weeks. I don't like to go beyond 24 to 26 because that's when I feel like you start to lose people mentally. I mean, even at 26 weeks, we're literally talking about half of a year there where you're in a fat loss phase. And another part of this for me that's so important is making sure that you have people that are able to stay mentally engaged throughout the fat loss phase where they're not getting discouraged, where they're not just like losing interest, where it mentally has been, they've, they've been in this rigorous, you know, hamster wheel for so long that they're starting to lose their ability to put it forth effort or the amount of effort that's needed. So that also needs to be considered, but in general, like a general statement, as I would say, more time is always better than less time. How do you prevent muscle loss during a cut? Okay. So muscle loss during a cut, that's a great question. This, yes, the diet matters. And, and like I said, in one of the previous questions, I think your overall protein intake during the day matters. And also when you make changes to your food intake, it's really important that you make calculated changes and, you know, for lack of a better word, try to get the most out of the least. So if somebody, and this is, this is where specificity matters. This is where not doing cookie cutter diets matters. If somebody's consuming, let's say 350 grams of carbs in your off season, um, I would initially make somewhat of a pull of anywhere from let's say five to 800 calories, uh, from food, or I might do some of that pull from food and then some of that increase in expenditure from cardio. Um, and then let's see what that does, you know, but I don't like these like all or nothing plans where you go from 350 you know, grams of carbs in the off season to literally your, your carb cycling 160 grams of carbs every other day. And that's your starting phase. So really when it comes to muscle preservation from a dieting standpoint, and this again is why giving yourself more time matters, 
make calculated pulls that err on the side of caution, not err on the side of you losing as much weight as possible, that's going to retain muscle and that's going to re retain tissue. And then the other part of this, and this is where a lot of people go wrong, and I'm going to kind of venture into the training category really quick. Oftentimes people correlate more work, more effort with fat loss. Um, and what happens is, is you start a fat loss phase and then let's say the first time in the gym that you go into the gym and you don't hit your numbers or you feel weaker, you try to compensate for feeling weaker by then adding more volume. And then you keep adding more volume and you keep adding more volume. And, and the next thing you know, eight weeks later, you've lost 40% of your peak strength and now you're doing 35% more work than you were doing. When in reality, first of all, I think we often forget during a contest prep or a fat loss phase that we also had bad days in the off season and we didn't just throw the whole plan out of the window in the off season. We just chalked it off as a bad day. But then in prep, we have to then think, oh, I need to compensate because I was weaker. So that, that now I need to add more volume in when the reality of the situation is you probably need to pull back. So rather than adding in more work, you probably need to need to pull back on some of your energy expenditure that you're you're putting out or pull back on your volume just slightly, let your body recover, get more sleep, just take an extra day off. And then that fat loss phase will still allow you to go forward, but then you'll regain some of that strength that you might have momentarily lost within the moment. Or you might just not need to do anything and just realize that bad days happen, bad sets happen, and just move on and chalk it up as that rather than doing something. So from a few different standpoints here, the best ways I would say to not lose muscle is to keep protein consistent, um, make get the most out of the least in terms of your initial diet changes, ride those out until they stop working. And then from a training standpoint, don't neglect what got you to where you're at. And if you do start to lose strength, at some point you're going to start to lose strength during a, a fat loss phase don't compensate loss of strength by then adding in more volume to make up for it because then that's going to continue to drive up fatigue which can then drive more strength loss and then more muscle loss over time so i want to stay lean all the time why go through phases why not just always be lean always in a quote unquote fat loss phase why can't i do that Okay, that's also a very why good. Why shouldn't I? Yeah, that's a great question. And now I will, I will say that I am very pro staying lean because I think when you stay leaner, and lean is a is a very relative term. Your body's more sensitive to nutrients. The more sensitive you are to nutrients, the more sensitive you are to carbohydrates. The more your body can uptake and utilize carbohydrates, and that utilization of carbohydrates could then turn into muscle over time. So, in in some ways, there's a difference between metabolically priming your body to stay lean versus constantly being in a caloric deficit. And that's where I think people mistake the two. You know, ultimately, if you're working with a coach, every time you go through a fat loss phase and you come out of that fat loss phase into an off season, you should be able to stay leaner every time you go through that process. And that is the goal. And, and you should be able to stay leaner on more food over time. You know, I, I can even, I didn't say this to him yesterday, but I, I saw Chris two days ago. Um, he's very lean right now, in my opinion, for his off season. You know, he's in a very good spot. Uh, a few years ago, he at this point, you know, because typically the Olympia is around the same period every year. Um, he's not as lean as what he is now. And that's just overall his maturation and then going through the process and coming out of the process and taking care of himself. That's part of it. Um, same thing with Nick Walker right now. Nick is tremendously lean for being eight weeks out of the Olympia. Uh, he, not the Olympia, New York pro, I was going to come in with the Olympia. So we had a really, really good prep for the Olympia that, which obviously in the last two weeks went South with his hamstring, but we were able to take where he was at. And because he was eating so much food, because he's so consistent with every part of his plan and really build him up and build his calories up on the back end of that prep, you know, going into his short off season, but he stayed lean. So I just want to 
say that there's nothing wrong with staying lean. There's nothing wrong with staying lean, but it's the environment of which it costs you to stay lean that matters so much. So if your ability to stay lean is so dependent on always being in a deficit, always being in a diet, always restricting yourself, that's going to drive metabolic rate down. That's going to drive thyroid hormone down. Those things are very important for keeping yourself primed to continue to respond long term. Um, so that that's where we're at in the area. You know, I, I am very pro staying lean and responsive, but it needs to be done with food through right dieting phases and then caloric increase phases to follow. If I'm in a fat loss phase, how much weight should I be trying to lose? Can I just cut as much weight as fast as possible? Should I go slow? Yeah. So the, the rate of to loss of muscle. Yeah, the rate of loss, I think, is super important. And obviously, it's percentage based based off of where you're starting. You know, so let's let's take two different examples. A my first prep ever, I think I started out at I want to say 193 pounds and I competed at 154. So again, going back to you guys that are that are just starting out, you have more fat to lose than you think you have to lose. Um, So give yourself time. And but I again, I think a healthy rate of loss for anyone, I wouldn't try to drive more than three pounds a week. For a lot of my athletes, I try to make it around two pounds a week. And then within that being said, these questions haven't been asked yet, but and it might be asked, but an important part of this too is giving yourself caloric increases in food to keep metabolic rate strong rather than your metabolism to con- continuing to downregulate as you continue to pull food. So it's important to bring in phases of increased purposeful overeating to keep. So, so basically, let's say if you know, if you start and your metabolism's here and then you pull baseline calories down, what you don't want to happen over time is then for your, your metabolism to then compensate and come down to where baseline calories are. You want to keep overfeeding in to keep your metabolic rate here to then continue to drive fat loss versus it just continuing to balance each other out and meet each other in the middle. You know, so that's a very important part of this as well. So when it comes to rate of loss, I would say you need to drive a rate of loss that's realistic for the time frame. Again, give yourself more time than needed, uh, but then also don't drive a rate of loss that's continuing to drive performance down week over week. Okay, so this question is asking, um, they're currently at 2,400 calories. They're doing six sessions of... Five days a week, 60 minute sessions. Of five days a week of 60 sessions. It, it's hard without knowing more variables than that. Um, if, if all you've done to this point is pull, 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 and add in more caloric expenditure through cardio, hopefully not through training as well, but probably both, and you've not overfed yourself at all with any type of calculated refeed, any type of you know cheat meal, free meal out, um, that would be the next step that I would take. So I would actually add in purposeful planned overfeeding first before continuing to pull more food or add more cardio. Um, that is, I and again, erring on the side of glass half full, um, erring on the side of caution. When somebody starts to stall out, if I know that we've pulled pretty significantly from what their base calories were in their off season on their ending off season plan, I'm going to start to add food back in to see if that will continue to facilitate fat loss versus just continue to pull, pull, pull. What supplements should I be taking or would you recommend during a fat loss phase? Good question. Um, supplements that I would recommend during a fat loss phase, I would recommend to moderately consume caffeine. I think caffeine can be a great tool if it's not overutilized. So we know that your energy through the day as your energy from food goes down, that's where energy is derived from, your ability to then operate through the day could start to come down. So you want to use caffeine as a tool to then be able to drive performance up, to be able to drive, you know, your ability to be coherent up, but use it in micro doses, I would say, you know, so, okay, this is a great point. If you are somebody that's in the off season and you're consuming 4,500 calories and you're also consuming 600 milligrams of caffeine a day, you're in trouble. Okay. So I would actually start this and be aware of this process in the off season. Try to consume the least amount of caffeine you can during your off season. I would start there and get that down as low as possible. And then as you go into a caloric deficit, 
and you start to feel more fatigue, start to place the caffeine back in where it's needed to then be able to drive performance through that fatigue. So that that means before your cardio session, that's a great time to do it. Um, if that means before your training session, that's a great time to do it. If you're somebody that trains in the evening, I would honestly suggest you not put caffeine in there because caffeine then is going to impact your sleep. And you might be like, oh, I sleep like a rock. Well, there's a difference between feeling like you sleep like a rock and actually getting repairing recovery sleep in, getting the amount of REM sleep that you need, getting the amount of deep sleep that you need. And we know scientifically that caffeine is going to impact that if it's consumed later on in the evening. So caffeine is a great tool, but know when, how to use it. And then, like I said, in the off season, try to pull it down as much as possible. Creatine. Um, I am the biggest proponent of creatine. I love creatine. I love the amount of research that we have on creatine. In my opinion, it's the, it should be the most number one used, consumed sports supplement, ergogenic aid, whatever you want to call it in the market. Um, I would really honestly start there. You know, if you need a little bit of uh, powdered protein, whey isolate, I would always go the route of 100% isolate. Um, just be cautious of that. You know, a lot of people, they develop allergies to whey if it's consumed consistently every single day. So also, guys, I want you to know, even though we own a brand, um, I'm obviously saying some things within this video that I feel is in your best interest rather than just shoving what we make as a brand down your throat. You know, I could be saying, oh, we'll definitely take a pre-workout before every workout. Well, if you're somebody that trains in the evening, I honestly wouldn't recommend that. I would have, you know, maybe a cup of coffee or an energy drink around two o'clock in the afternoon, give yourself that boost there, and then go into training with other aids, whether it be citrulline, whether it be, um, you know, glycerol, something like that, which is going to then drive a stimulus of increased blood flow, which ultimately is what you want during training, rather than maybe getting that boost from caffeine. But at five, six o'clock, getting that boost is going to be detrimental to your sleep. And then you're just in this domino effect of poor sleep, poor recovery, not getting the nutrients that you once got from food, which correlates to energy. And then it's just that's where preps really start to unravel. So really just baseline needs um, to start a prep to keep it simple. Three things I would say caffeine, use it smart, uh, creatine, use it every day consistently. And then if you needed something like a whey isolate to meet your protein needs, or if you need whey isolate to meet your sweet tooth needs, that's a great way to use it as well. Um, you know, maybe that sweet tooth doesn't come every day, but you can use it in the evening to kind of give yourself like some type of pudding or whatever, you know, concoction you might want, you know, some, some Greek yogurt and whey, something like that to satisfy that need as well while staying on plan. Somebody asked, I get up at 3 a.m. to go to the gym before work. What should I eat, if anything, before that workout? That's a great question. Kudos to you to, for getting up so early and, and getting it in in the morning. What I would really, what I think is most important, and this is something that I've actually learned and relearned as I've gotten back to endurance-based sports, uh, what I think is the absolute most important for early training is your hydration levels. So it's not so much food. Now, I will say food in a deficit is going to matter more the longer you're in that deficit first thing in the morning. But really waking up and hydrating well going into that training session. And hydration for me means salt plus water, not just water. Um, so what I would do is I would wake up first thing in the morning and I would consume some type of salt, you know, 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams, somewhere in there with about, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 ounces of water. And then if you're a coffee person, kind of split that up a little bit. So let the water and the salt get in your system, then have a little bit of coffee or maybe a pre-workout if you're going to have that. Um, so really what I think is most important is getting in electrolytes first thing in the morning. And if you're also going to train that early and maybe you don't like to train on a ton of food, I would actually have a, a larger meal um, in relation to what those meal sizes are for you before going to bed the night before. Wake up, hydrate a little bit, have a little bit of carbohydrate, a little bit of protein. You know, one of my go-tos is, is a banana and some type of beef jerky stick, you know, somewhere in the realm of 10 to 20 grams of protein just to get something in your stomach and then go train and then make sure you're properly refueling after that training session to, to get you through your day. I feel like a, a good one since a lot of these are like more catered toward men, not that they're not for women, yeah. but like uh, a female one would be, how does fat loss affect my hormones? Yeah. How does fat loss affect my cycle as a woman? I'm That's not a woman. A question. Okay. If I were a woman. Yes. Um, 
relating this to, and, and honestly this is this is questions not just for females but it's for men and women i don't necessarily be believe that we were created to operate at extremely low levels of body fat um, but this is the sport we choose this is what we're passionate about so it's about navigating and getting there as safe as possible when it comes to how do we do that um, again paying attention to your sleep and recovery is super important for hormonal function Another big thing that I really like to take into effect is where you're getting your nutrients from. Um, I've done this for a long time. I've done this way before the carnivore thing became the car carnivore thing. But from a mineral and nutrient standpoint, I've always liked to keep beef in females preps as long as possible just because of the profile that you're getting from that. Um, I think the nutrients that you get from beef is super important. For women especially, I am always going to err on the side of pulling carbohydrates before eliminating all fats from a female's diet, again, from a hormonal standpoint. And again, not just female. If you have a natural male or a natural female, yes, I think that you can kind of run a male into the ground um, and he's going to be more responsive to that. But yet still, if you look at it from an actual blood level perspective of male hormones and female hormones, both of those hormone levels are going to be compromised if you're going to then push fat loss too hard with no dietary fats being present. So what I think is most important is navigating your recovery, um, making sure that you actually take rest days during a prep, which is something that we haven't even addressed yet, but rest is, is vitally important. And then keeping the macronutrient of fat, which is essential. Fat is an essential nutrient. Um, carbohydrates are not essential. But yet, I do think they're essential for metabolic function, which is another conversation all in and of itself. But if I had to choose just one, especially from a hormonal standpoint, I would try to keep fats present as long as possible within the diet. Now, obviously, at the end, you got to do what you got to do. Um, but that should not be a long term option game plan. You know, so when it comes to the final cosmetic look, any nutrient is secondary to the look, in my opinion. But for as long as you can, keep all nutrients present. And then if you have to choose one from a hormonal standpoint, I would choose fats and then carbohydrates second. But if you're at that point of a prep, that's when for sure 100% these overfeeding calorically high days need to be put in as well to keep some metabolic hormonal function present during the fat loss phase. Okay, guys, this is session number one. Hopefully this was of value to you. It's something that you enjoy, look forward to. Um, and again, I just want to keep it going. I want to keep this going in the direction that you guys, the viewers, want it to go in. So if you want to drop questions here, our team will organize them. If you want to ask them on Instagram, if you guys want to ask me specifically, I'll make sure to screenshot them, and then we can add it to this cadence. Again, we're going to be doing this in type, some type of subject matter. I can talk more so about my experiences. I can talk about Olympia preps. I can talk about whatever you guys want. Um, I just want this to be something that you guys look forward to, enjoy, get something from. Hopefully it ends, ends up helping you. This is not about my coaching. This is not about like me trying to get more athletes. It's just simply about you know having a platform having a brand that I can help you guys and that's all I want to do.